In this module, we'll see about working with matplotlib. So what is matplotlib? Matplotlib is a graph plotting library in Python that serves as a visualization utility. So similarly, we see many libraries, right? About pandas and numpy. Similarly, this is another library which is used for visualization purpose. So in this matplotlib, we are having a module which is named as pyplot and this will make it has many features and it is making the plotting very easy for us. So with the help of this matplotlib, we can create many visualization reports such as line plot, scatter plot, histograms, pie chart, bar chart, box plot and many different types of plots. So let's start with this matplotlib and let us see how it is useful in the data science part. And uh, first step is the installation. To install matplotlib, you have to type pip install matplot matplotlib. Okay. I'll type this in Google Colab with exclamatory mark pip install matplotlib. I'll run this. I already have this library, so it is telling requirement already satisfied. So the next step will be importing the matplotlib. So matplotlib is a collection of a lot of modules, and in that we will be using majority about pyplot only. So what we are going to do is we are not going to import the entire matplotlib. We are going to just call the pyplot module from this matplotlib. So for that, what we are going to do is I'm going to import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. So this as plt is the alias name. So every time if you need to use something from this pyplot, you cannot call the entire name, right? Matplotlib dot pyplot. You cannot use it everywhere. So for that, we are giving a short name as plt. So I'll import matplotlib plot lib dot pyplot in that as plt. I'll run this. So now we can use this plt to call the matplotlib and we can do the visualization part. So let's start. First, let us understand what is the anatomy of a matplotlib figure. So we can see many type of figures, right? So while moving on with this topic, we'll be seeing about line plot, bar plot, histograms and so on okay so many uh, scatter plot and many types so we'll be getting some figure as an output like this some graph so let us understand what is the anatomy of this matplotlib figure so this is the title where you can set the title and you can set the minor tick major tick you can set the label y label x label x axis values y axis values markers the line okay type of the line and you can place the grid also, you can place the legend which mentions what color which is it, is it will represent. Okay, so this will be the general anatomy of a figure, matplotlib figure. Starting with line plot. So line plot actually is used for visualizing the trend over time such as stock prices or weather patterns or any other traffic website. You can visualize that and uh, they are often used in scientific research to plot data from experiments or simulations. So it can also used to compare two or more data series. Okay. So let us see, you can like separate it with different color and you can visualize in a single graph. We will see about this line plot. First, let us create an array and we will do this. Okay. So to use this line plot, what you can do is you have to call dot plot from plt. So plt is nothing but matplotlib.pyplot. And in that I am calling plot. So this plot will is generally mentioning the line plot and you can either pass one value which is like only x or y or both. Okay. So let us pass this x and y and let us see what is the result. Okay. And let me go on into my Google Colab. In the variable x. Okay. So now we are going to use numpy, right? So I will import numpy as np. Okay, we have already installed it. So now we can import it. NumPy as NP, I'm going to use here. So in the variable X, I'm going to call NumPy to create an array. We see this right. And in that, I am passing 0, 50. Okay. And then in Y, I'm creating another array. And I'm storing 0, 50. So these are the two values in both of these arrays. So let me call plt now, plt.plot and in that I am going to pass x and y 
and this plt dot show is like printing option okay in strings you will be print right so this plt dot show will give the output it will visualize it will show the result okay see here we got a graph we got a graph so in the x axis the value starts from zero and we are having a 50 value right so it extends till that and in y also we got the same and we got a straight line okay so in the zero x axis we are having zero and the y axis zero comma zero and 50 comma 50 is marked and then a straight line is drawn so this is the line plot this is a simple line plot similarly you can also draw multiple line plot okay you can also draw multiple line plot so let's run this so in the variable x i'll create an array with multiple points and in y let me create another array So I am going to plot this plt dot plot x comma y and let me show it plt dot show. So this will contain multiple points. So the first point will be x axis values one and the y axis values three. So we got the result here. And then next the x axis value when it is two the value of y reaches eight. So we are getting. 8 here and it is connecting that line and from that we are going in the point 5 in x axis we are having the value 4 in y axis so we are getting a point here and we have got this straight line so this is how you can plot multiple lines okay next you can also change the line style if you set line style equal to dotted it will change so there are many options like dashed and dotted lines you can change that for that i can just give here line style sorry in small letters line style equal to dotted so this will change the line style we will get a, a dotted output actually this image you can copy it okay you can copy and use it anywhere see here if i press right click i can just copy the image and i can paste it anywhere okay this is in an image format output and the next You can also set labels for x, y axis and you can set the title and if you want to visualize a grid you can do that also. Let's start with visualizing a grid here. So let me copy all this and if I wish to show a grid here so I can call the plt to show the grid dot grid and I have to pass a parenthesis here. So if I run this I will be getting grid in this diagram. So here we got a grid line it will be e easy for us to see which point where it is okay so the 1 and 3 merge here 2 comma 8 is here 5 comma 4 is here and then 7 comma 10 is here right so these grids will be useful for that and if i wish to go on with mentioning the x and y axis i can do that if i need to wish to set the title i can do that to mention the x label with i can set plt dot x label i can set some string here so th this will be displayed in the graph and plt dot y label will set the y label and plt dot title will show the title let's try this so all these things should be before this plt dot show okay the show will be like finally printing it please keep it at the end so in between this i can set the x label This is x axis, I am just setting it for an example. PLT dot y label. This is y axis. I will run this. See here, we got x and y axis name, right? So, label. And if you wish to set the title, you can do that also. So, in this, I am going to set a title PLT dot title line chart example graph line plot let's set this to plot line plot example graph okay we got the title here and the label for x and y and we got the grid here okay 
Next, moving on into creating subplots. So whatever may be the plot, whether it is a, like later on we'll be seeing about box plot or histogram or pie chart. Okay. So whatever may be the plot, if you want to create a subplot inside this line plot, okay. If you want a combination of plots, the subplot is nothing but a collection of plot. Okay. So in one diagram, you'll be splitting into, into pieces and you'll be having different, different images. So this is a subplot and you can see uh, this is entirely a single image and it is split into parts and each of this part will contain another graph okay each will have a separate graph and you can create this subplot with the help of plt.subplot and inside the parenthesis you have to pass three things i'll explain it one by one the first number okay it is representing the number of rows you are having in this entire image so i have mentioned two here which means i need two rows okay we are having this row one and row two and the next one number three represents the column number of column so i have mentioned here three columns so this is the first column this is second one and this is third one so this totally means it contains two rows three columns which means totally it is divided into six sections so you can represent six in the different different graphs here so the next number final number will be the position if i need these values in the to be plotted in the place of number one so i can pass one here this will place it here and if i pass number two it will be placed next to it and then three four five six okay so two comma three is the rows and columns will be constant and the numbers representing the position of it will be different okay one two three here then four five six so if i if i represent six here this will be these values these graph will be placed here in the sixth place okay but see here i have here mentioned only one row and two column which means i'll be having the, like these two okay only one row with two columns so totally there can be two images and I am plotting the first image with these values and second image with these values. So let's try this in Google Colab. In the variable x, I create an array x equal to np dot array. So I'll create some numbers here. One. So this is an array. In the variable y, let me create np dot array. So next, so I need this image. So I'm going to create a subplot. So this should image should contain what all it should be. It should be in one row with two column. Okay. And this value should be present in the first image. Okay. As a first image. So I have mentioned one comma two comma one and I'm going to plot at plt dot plot. So I'm going to plot X and Y. So I have mentioned it here and then next. So in some other variable you can create also. So in A, I am going to set np dot array three and then in B let me create the y-axis value for this subplot and this is going to be 40. So now I am going to set the subplot one row, two column. This is the second image. Okay. And I'm going to plot this plt dot plot a comma b should be plotted here and then plt dot show finally let's run this and we'll get a single image with which is separated into two columns one row two columns and the first values is placed in this first image and the second values is placed in the second image okay so we got this image right this is how you can use subplot to create multiple plots okay so based on the rows and columns you set that set that much amount of image you can store if it is a three row three column which, which means you can totally store nine images inside or if it is two row four column which means totally you can store eight images inside right so that's how this thing works so moving on into next plot which is scatter plot okay so from the scatter plot like for other plots we will see data set examples also so starting with scatter plot so what is a scatter plot? Okay. So scatter plot are often used in data analysis and machine learning to find patterns or relationship. Okay. And these can help us to visualize the clusters present in our data values or in the points. So if we can find the clusters in somewhere, so it should like see it, it seems like majority of like the values are related in that area, they are rel relatively similar in that way. So this is how you can plot a scatter plot. So you can call 
plt dot scatter and you have to pass x and y values so it will create a scatter point in the graph and uh, this x and y will combine and create a scatter plot and if you wish to go on like if you need some other points also included in the same graph if you want to compare it you can create that and like overlap with this image so we'll get both of these in a single graph we'll try to do it in google collab so let me go into my google collab and create these variables so in the variable x i am creating an array x equal to np dot array so let me create some random numbers here Okay. and then we need y points also so the thing is here both x and y should be of same length okay so if you are passing here the values x is 10 values and 10 number of y values should be present otherwise you will be getting error okay and uh, to move on with i'll change the values of y here Okay, now I have created x and y. So I'll first ch check the length of it whether they are equal or not. So length of x and I'll also print and try to check the length of y. So if they are equal then we are, we are ready to go. So it seems like there is some extra values on x. So I can add some other value here in y. So I'll run this. So now it will be equal. So th this is just for an example. Okay, if you are going to like, visualize it from a data set then no issue will be there so plot a scatter to plot a scatter plot you can call plt dot scatter and uh, i'm going to pass the values x comma y to create the scatter plot and i'll click plt dot show okay i'll run this so we should get a scatter plot here okay this is a scatter plot example okay so the values corresponding in the x five it is 99 so it is near 99 so it is arranged in ascending order okay the value 2 here will correspond to 101 so it is here and then again there is some other 2 and uh, so this is how this thing works okay and you will get scatter plots so this will help us to identify okay these images like these plots are near okay they are similar and you can find clusters in these and let us try to visualize this scatter plot from a data set and to load a data set I have uploaded, I will upload it here, okay, I already have it here, I will use pandas to load this data set, import pandas as pd, right, so I will run it, so in the variable, okay, we have two data set, one is a heart data set, another one is diabetes, so I will create the variable name in that name itself, heart equal to pd.read underscore csv, and uh, I'll copy this path, I'll paste it here, run this. So let's visualize it. Our dot head head function will give us the first five rows, right? It's loading. So we got the first five rows, okay? These are the features, and we are now going to use the scatter plot to visualize some, some of the features, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do is in this data set, I am going to use I am going to use the cholesterol, I am going to check the cholesterol value I am going to plot it in a scatter plot with age Okay, the age and cholesterol, I am going to plot these columns So for that, I will just take these separately So let's start with plt.scatter We will type it here itself, both the x and y So what will be the x value, okay I am going to plot x equal to, so I can set like this, x equal to I am going to call the variable name where I stored my data set. It is heart, H E A R T, heart dot. 
So in that which column I need, I am going to get the age column to store in x-axis. So age and in that, okay, I am going to pass some like condition here. So I am going to set data dot target is equal to 1. So first let's give 0. So what does this mean? Okay. So I am setting data dot target equal to 0. Data, sorry, data means like I will change this. This is not data, this is heart. So heart dot target equal to 0, which means in this heart variable, we are having a data set and there is a column known as target. And if it is 0, wherever it is 0, that rows will be selected and that rows, the age column is separately selected now. Understand? We are getting the heart variable here, the data set in that the target column, if it is 0, that rows alone is taken. Okay. Target is the output whether like heart disease is present or not. It is either 0 or 1. Okay. So whenever it is 0, we are selecting and getting the age of them. Okay. And in the y, what I am going to do is I am going to call the data set which is heart dot. Okay. I am going to select the cholesterol column, CHOL. And in cholesterol column, I'm going to get the same where like the target is equal to one. Okay, target will be zero here. So we'll be getting the zeros and we'll be plotting this. And uh, there is some other features like you can set the label here. Since you are going to plot multiple things here, you can set the label. Heart disease absent. So the zero will be heart disease absent. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot another thing. So I'm going to again call the PLT as cata. So in the X, I'm going to store from heart dot the age, same age, but now I'm going to plot heart dot target. I'm going to set this to one. So whenever it is one and uh, in Y, I'm going to call the same cholesterol. So these column where the heart target is one. Okay, and I'm going to set the label as so this feature is for the patient who was having heart disease present right and next so let me give some title here plt dot title so in that let me give age versus cholesterol diagnosis okay and uh, let me set the labels here plt dot label x label so the x axis is age right so in the x axis i'm going to set this to age and plt dot y label and i'll set this to let's set this to cholesterol okay so let me get the legend also plt dot legend so legend is nothing but it will tell you which color is which okay we are getting two things so it will it should show the color with the name and finally plt dot show which is for printing or visualizing the image so let me run this i'll run it and explain you once again what is happening here okay this is the scatter plot we got from our data set so what is happening the blue color is heart disease absent and the orange color is heart disease present so it is giving in two colors we are passing in the same image two things okay like this so here i have used only one i have shown you you can also overlap with another point so it will be in different colors and you can visualize so similarly we are using it with the help of data set okay i am setting the label heart disease absent and heart disease present so you'll get a color what it is so you can visualize this okay there's out layer here you can find that and I will explain you once again. So in the X, I am using age, okay. And we are selecting the age wherever the target is zero, which means like the patient who don't have heart disease, their age, we are selecting it in X and in Y, we are taking the cholesterol of them and it is in blue color. Similarly, we are getting the patient who have heart disease. We are getting their age and cholesterol and it is in orange color and it is portrayed in this scatter plot. This is how you can use a scatter plot. Next, bar plot. Next, we will move on into bar plot. So, what is a bar plot? So, bar plot is used to visualize. Okay, you will get different bars height wise. You can compare how much level, numerical level, what it is. Okay, now we will see with this example how a bar plot is. 
let me go into my collab so we'll see this and then we'll use our data set also to visualize a bar plot so next i'm creating np.array i'll create some names here a b c and d and uh, in y so it is capital x i'll change this to small y equal to np.array i'm going to set some values here okay so now to plot a bar plot what you can do is you can call plt dot bar okay this will set the bar plot and i'm going to pass x comma y and we'll see the result now plt dot show and if you run this okay this is a bar plot where you can see the value of a is around 3 so because we set this to 3 and uh, the b is around 8 c is 1 and uh, d is 10 okay so this is how you can like how much values or number of occurrences, occurrences based on it you can visualize this and uh, this is how you can use a bar plot okay similarly if you want if you wish to this is horizontal sorry vertical bar plot there is something known as horizontal plot bar plot and if you wish to do that you can call bar h so this will create horizontal bar plot okay so we'll try to do this so let me copy this we have plotted it, this right so this is vertical and now we are going to visualize it in horizontal way to do that i'm going to use bar h and if i run this we'll be getting horizontal bar plot Okay, the x-axis here and you can find the y-axis here and this plot is now converted into a horizontal bar plot, okay. This will be somewhat good, visually appealing. And now what we are going to do is, we are going to use this bar plot, okay, with an example of a data set. So I'm going to copy one, I'm going to load this diabetes data set, we'll copy the path here. Let me create a variable diabetes equal to pd dot read underscore csv. And let me paste the path here. I'll run this. Let us visualize the first five rows using the head function. Fine, this is a diabetes data set where we are having the columns known as pregnancies, glucose level, blood pressure, skin thickness, and many values. And then finally, we are having the outcome column. Where the outcome column, the one represents the presence of diabetes and zero represents the absence of diabetes. So now what we are going to do is we are going to use bar plot to show visually the outcome column okay so we'll be counting the values like how many persons got one or how many persons got zero which means how many people having diabetes and how many don't have diabetes so for that i'm going to create a variable okay so for now i'm creating it in the name of nos so i'm going to call the outcome column from the diabetes data set outcome and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use value underscore counts to actually see how much people present in 0 and 1. And if I try to print this, we can see that like 500 persons got 0, which means they don't have diabetes and 268 persons patients got 1, which means they have diabetes. Now we are going to see this in representation in visualization. So first understand this 0 and 1 are coming under nos in this variable they are index and this 500 and 268 are values okay i can actually print this print nos dot index if i run this we'll get the index number 0 and 1 which is present there and i can also print using nos dot values so this will give us the values which is present 500 and 268 so now we are going to pass the index value in the x and uh, values of this in y so that we can represent it in the bar plot to do that i'm going to call matplotlib pld dot bar okay now i'm going to pass the x value is the variable nos i'm going to pass the index for x and uh, nos dot values i'm going to pass that in y next let me use pld dot show now i'll run this okay we got a plot here so this value is near 500 so which means the zero here and this is below like between 200 and 300 right below little bit below 300 268 
So now see here the like there is no label in X and Y, there is no title, and see here this Y axis is little bit clumsy, right? We are having like uh, decimal values, items need zeros and ones. So this is the center value see here, one represents this and zero represents this, but I don't want it to be this much clumsy. So I'm going to use some properties here. Let me use plt dot title. Let me set a title here. Attribution of outcome. So let it be the title and plt dot x label. So I'll set it as a diagnosis and plt dot y label and let me set this to count. Okay, and now these are all fine. Now see here, I, I need to change the ticks which is present in X, right? So let me call the PLD and X ticks. So this will help us to set the X ticks. So I'm going to pass two things. The first one will be 0, 0,1, which is already present, and this will be the value which I'm going to need to like place there. So here I'm setting the label as 0 and 1 only. So now if I run this, please make sure you are like doing this before the PLD dot show. The PLD dot show should be in the end so that you can like encounter all of this and incorporate and visualize it. So I'll run this now. See here now we got the graph with 0 and 1 in the x-axis. Similarly, you can go on with the y ticks also, it's possible. And we got a title, the x and y label, right? So this is what a bar plot is. Then we'll try to see the next one is histogram. So histogram are very useful for visualizing the distribution of a data set okay and uh, like you can like visualize a height distribution or weight distribution you can pass that column uh, let us try this see here uh, we are ha having a random values in the x and if you try if you need to plot a histogram what you need to do is you can call pld.hist so this will create a histogram and the first one i am passing is the values which i need to plot so i am passing x here and uh, there is something known as bins okay so you can set the value of bins so bins will represent like how much you want to segregate okay imagine if you are having 100 rows okay if you are passing some column known as age column so it should create some bar with histogram right so if i need to split that into 10 okay so i can set bins equal to 10 so that it will split the age in 10 and then it will plot the histogram if i want it into then i can give that bins equal to 2 we'll try to visualize it and let's try this in column itself without seeing this example we will use the data set and uh, let's use this age day column okay in the diabetes data set i'm going to use the age column diabetes and in that age i hope it's correct capital a fine so let me run this so this column contains age and we are going to visualize this in histogram so i just need to pass this here there let me call plt dot hist this will plot a histogram and I am going to pass the variable diabetes age. Now I need to mention the bin value. So bin is equal to let me set this to 20 now for now. Let me run this with pld.show. I'll run this. See here, this is a histogram and it is split into 20 different things. Okay. If I change this to 10, you can see the difference. So it will segregate based on it. I can even set this to 4. So it will separate them into 4. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is what this histogram is and this bin value is. And uh, you can actually set the title here also. The dot title. Age distribution. and uh, plt dot x label age and in y label we are having the count right and run this okay see here now let us try to visualize it so in this plot in this bar see here it is around 35 so between this value 20 and 35, we are having maximum count of around 500 people. Okay, the remaining people are like there are around this age, we are having this count and above the 70 to 80, you can see here that much 
count we are having it's very low like similar like near to 20 or 30 like that so this is how you can visualize using the histograms next moving on into box plot so box plot are used for visualizing the spread of a data set okay like range median quartiles and outliers so this is a like a blueprint of a box plot so we need to understand that to like understand what it is representing so in the center we are having a middle median value which is known as middle quartile quartile and uh, we are having upper quartile and lower quartile which is like 25 percent difference from the median value and above that 25 plus 25 will be the 50 percent values will be in the quartile 4 here and another 50 percent will be here we are having a lower whisker and upper whisker and above this or below this will be the outliers which is like a very very much difference from the center median value okay this is what this box plot is you can plot the box plot with the help of plt.boxplot and you can pass the data inside so th this will create a box plot for you okay we will try this in google collab let me go into the data set so in this data set now what we are going to do is we are going to use this age and outcome column and we are going to visualize in box plot for the patients okay the age of the persons who have zero in the outcome and the age of the persons who have one in the outcome okay we'll try to do, do this using box plot so let me call plt dot box plot and uh, inside the parenthesis i'm going to create a square bracket and we are going to give two things inside of this first let me call the variable name diabetes and uh, in diabetes okay i'm going to set a condition here where in the diabetes data data set in diabetes dot the column which is outcome okay if the outcome column if it is equal to zero i'm going to select that rows only first so this will select only the rows which contains outcome column as zero and in that i'm going to get only the age okay so this will get the age for us comma now i'm going to create another condition here the second one will be diabetes in that let me give diabetes So inside this diabetes, let me give the condition similarly here in that the outcome column if it is equal to 1 okay and their age okay so next I will close the square bracket which you opened here it is ending here inside of this we are giving entire thing okay next let us give the label also here labels equal to first one will be no diabetes and the next one will be diabetes present okay so we'll try to learn this we are getting some error here which is mismatch so this one starting here and ending here this one right so if i run this it will run fine so here see here we are we got this graph let me give the x and y labels first plt dot we set the title age against diagnosis and uh, plt dot x label let it be diagnosis and uh, plt dot y label and let us set this to age okay finally i'll try plt dot show so now this will be altered we'll visualize the graph and understand what the meaning of is so we got age against diagnosis so age column here and diagnosis whether it is diabetes absent or diabetes present and see here you can find the median value here the median value for no diabetes is around like below this 30 which is around 28 or something and the average like median value for diabetes present is, is around 38 or something okay so this is how you can use the box plot and these are the outliers we are having the upper whisker here lower whisker here this will like give us a representation okay the very various distribution of the plots using this box plot fine and please remember we are calling inside this square bracket we are passing two things first one will be no diabetes second one will be diabetes present and we are calling with the help of outcome column if it is zero we are getting the data set dot age and data set 
here if the outcome is 1 okay and we are selling the labels here and title x label y label oh, that's it about the box plot next pie chart okay let us see how to do this pie chart so pie chart are useful for showing the relative size of different categories okay okay we'll, it will give what, what is the percentage of distribution among them so we can do this with the help of plt.py okay this will if you pass one thing so see here we are having an array here which is like 100 is equally splitted and uh, if we pass y here it will create a pie, pie chart let's try this in google Plot first we'll try to plot this pie chart and then we'll use our data set to plot that okay first let us create a simple pie chart plt.py okay and inside of this i need to call np.array let us create this first x equal to np.array and let me create some values 25 35 so around then again 125 and 50 okay now i run this plt.py we pass x here and let us call plt.show Okay, this is a pie chart. These values are represented here, but it is like we don't have anything legend or what it is meaning. We don't know that, right? So for that, for that, what you have to do is you have to pass the labels. So to set the labels, you can call labels equal to, you can set it here or you can set it previously with the help of square bracket. You have to pass it as a list and then you can pass it here or you can type it here itself. So we are passing apples, bananas, series, dates, and we have to call the plt.legend to actually understand which color is which you have to know right so for that let me set here y equal to let me set the labels here apple orange kiwi and banana and uh, here it, it should be before right so let me paste it here comma labels equal to y okay and uh, plt not legend so let me run this and as you can see we got the legend with color right now we can understand the distribution so orange kiwi banana so banana is very least as we know the banana value is 15 only and the 25 value which is kiwi which is in green color and then this orange and apple the orange and blue ones okay so in that orange is majority because it is 35 okay and we can find the kiwi and uh, what it, this 25 this is kiwi and the apple is 25 right the red blue one the blue and green one are equally distributed the banana is the least and the most major is orange now we'll use this to plot it in our data set we'll try to visualize the age again we have counted the values right sorry we have counted the outcome right here yeah. In this the outcome column 500 and 268 or else what we will do is we can call the age here we are having the age in this hard data set right so we will call that and we will try to plot that in the pie chart okay hard dot age let us try to get this column so now we are going to pass this sorry the outcome right sorry about the age part so we cannot plot the age in the pie chart it will be very vast and we can plot the outcome it will be better here it is represented as target okay so let me select that column target so we are having zeros and ones so let us count the value here h e r t heart in that target column dot value underscore counts okay we pass it here so we are having 5261 and 4990 so now what we are going to do is this is the index 0 and 1 and the values are 5, 2, 6 and 4, 9, 9. I'm going to call plt.py and in that we are going to call the pass the values here. So let me create and store it in a variable. No equal to this and let me call the no dot values here and the labels will be no dot index fine let me run this let me set the title here plt dot we can get the legend also and 
is the dot title. Let me set this to diagnosis. Finally, PLD dot show. And I'll run this. So see here, we got the distribution between 1 and 0. 1 is majority because we got, when we try to print this, we got the 1 value majorly and the zeros are very less. 5261 and 499, which is around 50%, right? Equally, so it is giving this. You can also get the percentage here. So, if you want to visualize the percentage in this pie chart, what you can do is you can set the auto PCT, auto PCT, and uh, I'll set this to percentage 1.1F. 1 so, this will represent the, the point one values, and then I pass the percentage percentage here. So, if I run this, I will get the percentage in between. See here, we got only the decimal values I'm mentioning is 1.1, .1, so it will mention the only one point. So if you want like 3, 2, 1, like many decimal places, you can mention that here. So now it is representing 51.3 percentage got diagnosis 1 and 48.7 got 0. Okay. You can actually change these labels without this index positive which is 1 right and this is negative which means absent so if I run this so this is a distribution okay about positive and negative that's how you can use this pie chart in this module we'll see about working with C bond so what is C bond C bond is another library similar to pandas numpy and matplotlib it is a popular python library and this is also used for visualization okay in Python, Matplotlib and Cborn both are very famous for this visualization. And this is built, this Cborn library is built on top of the Matplotlib library. And this Cborn offers a variety of functions to generate different types of visualizations like scatter plot, bar plot, heat maps, violin plots, and many others. We'll see that one by one, nearly eight plots. We'll see about it. And uh, we have Matplotlib, right? Why we need Cborn and why it is built on top of it? So this is a high level interface for creating informative and the main thing is C bond is visually very attractive. Okay. So it will show a very good attractive image. It will, it will be very useful for us. So we'll see that how to use this C bond starting with the installation to install C bond. You have to type pip install C bond. I'll go into my Google collab with the exclamatory mark. I'm typing pip install C bond. Okay. So I'll run this. So I already have the C bond. So it is telling requirement already satisfied. So the next step will be importing C bond. To import C bond, we are importing it entirely. Import C bond as in the short form SNS. So let me call it import C bond in the name SNS. Right? I'll run this as SNS. Sorry import c bond as sns okay now we have loaded c bond in the variable sns now let us see how to use it to plot starting with scatter plot okay so to draw, draw a scatter plot in c bond you can call sns dot scatter plot in matplotlib we will be just calling dot scatter but here we will be passing dot scatter plot and uh, you have to pass the x and y so x what is the x value we can pass the name of the column name and uh, in y you can pass the column name which you want to plot in y and the data you have to set the like variable where you have stored your data set okay so if you pass the data here then no need to call the data set dot column name so you can just mention the name of the column in x and y and you can pass the data equal to the data set where you store and this will be very helpful we see how to use the c bond and in this, what I'm going to do is C bond already has some sample data sets. Okay. With the help of C bond, you can load some data set and it is very helpful for us to understand C bond. So let me load it. First, I'm going to load a iris data set about a flowers. So I'm going to store it in the variable iris. So see here how to import a data set from C bond. You can call SNS dot load underscore data set. And in the bracket, you have to pass the keyword. So C bond having iris data set. So let me run this. This will load the data set. This is like coming with the C bond itself. And I can see it with the help of iris dot head. Let me run this. And this is the iris data set. It is about flowers. We are having sepal length. 
sepal width, petal length, petal width, and the species of it. Okay, so there are different different species present here. You can also get the info of it. Dot info. Okay, so totally one fifty values are present, and about their data type. And now let us see. Let us see about scatter plot using this iris head. Okay, sorry, using iris data set. So to draw a scatter plot, I am going to call SNS dot scatter plot. Okay. Now I have to pass x, y, and the data. So in the x, I am going to pass the sepal underscore length. Okay. This is a scatter plot between sepal length and petal length. So in x axis, I am going to pass the sepal length. And in the y axis, I am going to pass the petal underscore length. Okay, and now we haven't mentioned the data set name, right? So this will show error. To pass it, we are going to give the data equal to the variable where I have stored my data set iris. So this data set is loaded here. So it will take the sepal length and petal length that columns now. Then no issues for us. If I run this, we'll be getting a scatter plot. Okay. This is the scatter plot between the sepal length and petal length, and we can find some patterns here. This is a group of pattern, and here we can find a bulge of patterns and some outliers, right? So this is how you can use a scatter plot. But see here, it is like visually it is not that much not appealing. You can set some other way things also in this. And now what we are going to do is, this is a combination of like entire thing, right? Sepal length and petal length. Now I am going to split that with the help of species column. Okay. We'll get what is the unique values present in the species. Species dot value underscore counts. Okay, there is something known as Sertosa, Versicola, and Virginia. So these three species are present here. Now we are going to separate it like based on the species. Okay, so what I have to do is I'm going to set hue. Okay, there is something known as hue, and this hue equal to I'm going to set the species column as hue. Okay. So hue is nothing but for color encoding. Okay, based on color, it will differentiate. Since species has three, right? Three different unique values, we will be getting three different colors and their respective sepal length, petal length in the graph. I hope can you see? You can see the blue color is Sertosa. Okay, it seems like they have like very little sepal length and petal length, and the middle value go to Versi color, and uh, the Virginia has the longest sepal length and petal length, right? So we can see that with the help of this, with the help of this color differentiation. So hue is for color encoding. We have separated it with the help of hue, and also you can also set some other things. Also, you can set the size here. I'll pass the size. So size I'm going to give the column like let us separate it with the help of sepal width or petal length. So let me set it to petal width first. Petal underscore width. I'll run this. So it is separated into these much values: 0.4, 0.8, 1.2 based on the size. So if it is the biggest dot, it is like petal width is 2.4, and if it's if it is the smallest here, you can see it is 0.4. It is like differentiating with the help of this size also. Okay, this is how you can set this. There is also something known as set theme. Okay, whenever you are starting, you can set the SNS theme. SNS dot set underscore theme. So there is you have to mention the style here. There are styles like white. If I run this, this will set for the entire things. Okay, which our graph we are creating. This is the white theme. You can set this to dark. There are some other themes also. You can check that in browser. So this is a dark theme. See here, we are getting the dark theme, right? Okay, this is how you can use the scatter plot here. There is also another thing known as palette, which will set the color here. Palette equal to There are many color codes for here. I will set some other like few color code rocket. So this is a color code. You see, we got some different colors, right? And you can pass some other color codes also. I will pass the rainbow underscore r. I will run this. So this is the color difference, right? So you can see that. So this is how about scatter plot. Okay. We have seen about passing the data, and we saw about the hue, which is like color encoding, and size for differentiating, and then palette and setting the theme for entire graphs. Okay. Then moving on into bar plot. 
So to do a bar plot, you can call SNS dot bar plot, and this will create a bar plot with x value, y value. You can set the queue here also. You can pass the data and palette here. Okay. Let us see the bar plot now. So bar plot, why we are using? It is represent categorical data with rectangular bars, right? Where height and length are representing the frequency or count of the category. So it is useful for comparing the count or frequency. We'll try to do this in bar plot. Let me load some other data set now. There is also the Titanic data set is available in Seaborn. So I'll call SNS dot load underscore data set. And uh, let me pass Titanic name here. I'll run this. Let me give Titanic dot head. Let us see the columns now. Okay, these are the column names. Whether they are survived or not, passenger class, their gender, age, about siblings or parent, like parent, children, spouses present or not, then fare, embarked station, the class, and these details. Okay, so these are the things present. So now we'll do we'll do about the bar plot with the help of Titanic data set. Okay, let me call SNS dot bar plot. And in the bracket, I'll pass the value for x will be the column. Six and in Y I am going to pass whether they are survived or not. Okay, so based on this I am going to split that. And first let me give the data equal to Titanic. We'll see this first. Okay, it seems like most of the females got survived and male got like survived only less here. Okay, this is how bar plot works. It will give the count. You can understand right. So we are not setting anything. This like we are passing the x and y values and it is creating. In very few lines, right? This is why we prefer C1 over Matplotlib. It is good for visualization and very easy. And I'm going to also set the color palette. I can set that palette equal to. Let me set it to RDBU. It's red, red and blue. There are many palettes available. You can check that about C1. Okay. Now I can also set the hue here. Hue is for color encoding. Now we are having the male and female who got surveyed. Okay, that's what this. Graph tells us. Now I'm going to check this class column with the help of class column. Okay, in male, male survived, right? So male survived from like if first class is high or not, second class is high or not, which is the highest, which is the lowest? I'm going to see that for male and female in this class. Okay, using this class. So I just need to pass the hue here. So I can pass the hue equal to class. So this is for color encoding. It will split them with different colors. And you can see here, so we got le legend here. So first class male got surveyed mostly, and in the female also the first class people got surveyed mostly. The second class surveyed then in both the places, and the third class also got surveyed, but it is very less, right? In both the cases, male and female. This is how you can use Seaborn and bar plot. You can pass the hue here. Hue is very easy. It is very important, so it can give you very visualizations very easily. You cannot compare, right? We are having this data set. You cannot see it one by one. But with the help of this plot, bar plot, you can see, like, right? So the persons from the first class only got surveyed majorly, and uh, when comparison, female got surveyed mostly rather than male in this Titanic data set. Next, we'll go on with count plot. So count plot is a graph that shows the count of occurrences of each categorical value. Okay, in the data set, so it it will give the count of that set. So we'll try to do it. So you can call SNS dot count plot. So the variable which you need to count, you can pass that, and you can set the data also. We'll use this count plot using this Titanic data set. SNS dot count plot. Okay, and here x I need to mention right. So with the x I'm going to go and see my data set. Let me give the survived column. Okay, survived. And next, I am going to mention the data equal to Titanic. I'll run this. Okay, survived is nothing but whether they are survived or not. And it seems like like zero is like you can see the count right. This is what the count plot is giving. We got around more than five hundred who got survived, and one is like not survived, and it seems like nearly three hundred persons didn't survive. So this is what this data set is right. So you can count that with the help of this count plot. You can pass the variable and it will give us the count of it. Okay. You can also check the with other things such as embarked. Okay. That is a embarked and there are many things. Let me pass the embarked here. It seems like three stations. 
okay three stations uh, queensburg i don't know exact name it is like three different stations and from yes we got like more than 600 passengers from c we got nearly 200 and in q it is like less than 100 only right so this is how you can just pass the count plot it will give like it is similar to alley underscore counts but it is visually giving the answers next moving on into box plot we seen about the box plot in matplotlib also we will see it here you have to pass the x and y value and then the data where you are going to plot we will use the iris data set for this okay using the iris data set i will again call iris dot head okay this is the data set and using box plot sns dot box plot i am going to pass in the x i am going to plot the species and in y i am going to plot the sepal width okay and the data equal to iris so i'll run this so we got a box plot here and you remember i hope so the middle line represents the median value so based on the species i'm separating the sepal width of each of one each one okay it seems like the setosa the median width is around 3.4 and with versi color we got like below 3.0 and with Virginia, it is like above 3.0. Okay, this is how you can use this box plot. So, box plot is like give you the distribution of the data set whether it is minimum value, maximum value, median, outliers, quartile. You will get that using box plot, right? Next, we are going to see something new known as pair plot. So, your pair plot is a graph that shows the pairwise relationship. So, it will give a pairwise relationship between variable, variables in the data set okay for each column compared with other columns you will get many graphs in this pair plot so it is useful for identifying patterns or correlation between them we will try to use this pair plot to draw a pair plot you can pass sns dot pair plot okay you can set the data and hue value we will try this let me call sns dot pair plot and in that I am going to pass the data iris let me pass for iris first and uh, let's run this first then we will go for visualization some other things next so it's running and uh, you can see the different what it is so it will give you the pairwise relationship so how is the petal length related with sepal length you can get a graph here Okay, bar plot and how the sepal length is related with the petal length, you can get it here. This is how you will get a comparative, okay, you will get a comparative graph separated in as uh, subplots, okay. This is an entire plot. And another thing, whatever the plot you are drawing in matplotlib or sigbon, you can just copy or paste it anywhere, okay. And uh, this is how it will give a correlation between them. We will try to give palette. So let me set this to set to one. There is something known as set to one palette. And I'll set a hue here. We'll try to separate it with the help of species. Okay. In species column, I'm going to give the hue. So let us try to visualize it now. Okay, we are getting error. Set to one is not a valid name. So let me remove this. We are having these are the like names. Set to one capital S, right? So you can see here, these are the like color values, palette names, different, different colors. You can set that and I'll run this now. Okay. See here we got based on the species, we got different, like different pair plots. How about this relationship? Okay. It shows a pairwise relationship how each column is related with other columns okay using different different graphs and it is visually appealing also right next let me zoom this and uh, we'll see about the next plot now next moving on into heat maps okay so heat map heat map is using correlation we are going to do that so a heat map is a graphical representation of data where the individual values contained in a matrix are represented as colors okay based on the colors it is represented and when using correlation for this heat map, it shows the relationship between different different columns, how one column is related with the other, related with other. 
here we got different different graphs but in a single graph we are going to get a heat map so heat map is nothing but based on the color you can see the difference and this heat map is composed of like the relationship between each columns okay one column with other columns if the color is very warmer it means a very stronger positive correlation is present and if the color is weak then we can understand there is a like very negative correlation is present between them and there are many things here you can use re regarding like you can to get the correlation first we have seen this in pandas right so the variable name where you have stored your data set you can call dot cor so this will create a correlation a table right so i hope you remember we will see that also so when we pass this in the heat map bsns dot heat map it will create a heat map and if you need color color bar you can set c bar equal to true and the line width you can set that and for annotation if you need annotation is nothing but the values which you, if the graph if you need that you can give one out equal to true and you can set the format of it also and you can also set the color map which is like for colors only we'll see this in google collab so for this we'll use the iris okay iris dot cor let me run this so this is the correlation 4 cross 4 we got how this is related with this and this column is related with this column what is the correlation difference between them right we can also go for titanic dot cor okay how each column is related with the other column what is the correlation whether it is a positive correlation what is the relation that's what this correlation means so what it is it is a positive correlation or negative correlation we can get that and uh, let's try this now using heat map sns dot heat map and in the bracket let me pass this okay titanic first let's plot for titanic titanic dot core fine so next i have to mention other things such as color map equal to true let me set that to true comma sorry c bar equal to true color bar c map we'll set that later what is the color bar we need and uh, line width let me set this to one or let's set, set this to two and then if i need annotation i can set that to true and format let me set this to 0.1f fine next let us set c map equal to let's get this in blue colors okay so blues let's run this okay we got an error okay i have to pass this here parenthesis so i hope it will be fine now and we are getting the plot right so this is what a correlation matrix is it is a heat map and you can see the darker color is like one it is a like equally correlated because this survived is related with survey right both are same so we got one here and the value like positive or negative correlation you can compare it here right so if you remove this or not equal to false if we set that to false you won't get the values inside see the graph now i'll run it now if i set this to false you won't get the values inside you will be just getting a heat map okay i can set this to true and i am setting the format as 0.1f so we'll be getting values in one decimal point we got right one point like 0 0.1 or 0 0.6 point 0.3 point 0.2 and color map if it is not blue you'll be getting different colors and color bar is this okay so if the correlation if the color is this dark then it is 1.0 correlation so if it is very light you can see right minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.4 you can get the very white like near to white colors so line width if i set this to 20 you can see the difference it is like very different right so we are setting this to 2 so that's what the line width do this is what a heat map is okay next moving into dist plot so what is a dist plot we haven't seen that right so a dist plot is a graph that shows the distribution of the data set by plotting a histogram it is like similar to a histogram with the kernel density estimate so based on the density you will getting histogram it is usual it is useful for visualizing the shape and spread of the data and can help to identify any patterns which is present there okay and to plot a dist plot you can pass a variable here so variable where you stored your data set or which is the like column you are going to visualize you can pass that in this sns dot dist plot okay we'll try to do this i'm going to load a new data set for this 
okay i'm going to call sns dot load underscore data set there is something known as tips data set i'll run this let's try, try to see this tips dot head it's a new data set we haven't seen that so it is about like a hotel data set what is the total bill what is the tip they are giving and uh, who is it is male or female whether they are smokers or not it is day time or night time okay okay oh, sorry day is like whether which day monday or tuesday wednesday something like that and time it is dinner time or breakfast and size we got we are getting this right so now we will try to do the dist plot using this sns dot dist plot so i am going to call the total bill here okay I stored in tips right tips dot total underscore bill. Let me pass this column. I'll run this. Okay, we got a histogram. Okay, based on the difference, we are getting the histogram right. And it seems like what is the density and total bill value? So if the bill value is this much, so we are we are getting the like what is the most people are getting right? So that's what this this plot does. Okay, we can pass other things also. Like the tips column, here tip right. Okay, this is the tip value and their density. Okay. Next, moving on into while in plot. So let us see what is a while in plot. So why that name? You understand that a while in plot is a graph that combines the information of a box plot. Okay, it is similar to a box plot with the kernel density plot, but it shows the distribution of the data in terms of the density. Based on the density, we'll get okay, and it will. It is like similar to the shape of the violin. We'll see that, and it is useful for detecting patterns and outliers based on it. We'll see that. So to visualize a violin plot, to plot that you can call SNS dot violin plot. So you can pass the x and y and the data set you are going to use. We'll use this tips data set to see that. Okay, again we'll, let me call the tips dot head. I'll run this, and uh, you can call SNS dot violin plot, and we'll see why it is named as violin plot. And in the x, I'm going to pass the day column, and in y, I'm going to pass the tip. Okay, we are going to compare the day and tip value. So based on which day we are getting most, you can see that. And the data set we are going to use is tips. I'll run this. Okay, this is similar to violin, right? So we are getting the violin plot. And uh, in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are the columns here. Okay, are the values. And uh, this, okay, we are getting the center value here. I hope you can see the white dot is the median value. We are getting the median right. In case of we got it in the box plot, similar to it, we are getting here the middle values in the white dot. And uh, these are the like most like went away. And uh, you can see the density is high here. We are getting this. These areas are like most dense. Okay, you can find it in all the points, right? You can set the palette also. You can change the palette and like these things. Okay, this is how you can use a violin plot.